Hello and welcome to the Women's Show. Uh, I'm your host Chris Brack and today I am joined by Neil Atkinson, uh, Philippa Smord and Emma Sanders. How are we doing guys? Very well indeed. Yeah, great. Good, good. I feel like we haven't done one of these for ages. It feels like forever since we talked about women's football. Well, it's been the, one of those funny dips of games and then obviously there's been the one since the turn of the year but you know there's not been a better time you can think of really to talk about them Chris than now they're doing so well. And I've just miss seeing you, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, for those who don't know, um, January transfer window uh, is is still open. So, Liverpool have done uh, some business. Uh, so, we've seen uh, Georgia Walters, who was with us for the first six months of the year, has moved on. She's gone on to uh, Sheffield United. So, I think for her, it's probably, uh, I mean, you're correct if I'm wrong, it's pro- probably just because she wanted more minutes. Because, to be fair, whenever she came on for Liverpool, she was, you know, very good for us. You know, and especially when it was closing games out, she was really good at um, holding stuff up. She always gave us an option, gives a reason, uh, an option to rest um, Leanne Kiernan, especially with Rihanna Dean being out. But I wish she was probably more, the player wanted more minutes and we probably couldn't guarantee that at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure the club wouldn't, you know, openly say this, but I think the plan was always that it was, you know, it was going to be a, a bit of a short-term thing with Georgia anyway. Um, you know, I, I know that PD had... Had plans, obviously, to bring in um, Katie Stengel. Uh, they were working on that for for a while, but you know, kind of before her name was kind of you know made their priority target. I know that he had he had plans for sort of a long term striker, and obviously he's looking towards towards the WSL. Um, and Georgia probably isn't quite at at that level um, yet. So yeah, I think um, I think it was a, a good move for both parties. She did well, as you say, when when she was with Liverpool. I think she enjoyed her time. So. Um, yeah, it was all very nice. She left very amicably and, and good luck to her and hopefully it goes well for her at Sheffield United. Excellent, excellent. And then as you've already mentioned, um, Katie Stengel, uh, Stengel? Stengel, I always get her name Stengel. wrong. Stengel. Stengel, sorry, <laughs> uh, has joined us uh, from, it's a team in Norway, I'll be honest, I can't pronounce it and I don't, I'm not even going to attempt to make a fool of myself saying it wrong, but she's a striker that comes with a lot of pedigree, you know, Bayern Munich, uh, top scorer in America, had a lot of time in Australia as well. Briefly worked with Matt Beard uh, at Boston Breakers. So, and she's a, a different type of striker to what we've got. Uh, you know, has that experience, that pedigree around her, but she's just different to Leanne Kiernan, which is probably good to have that alternative in the squad. Yeah, I think it's good to have that alternative. And actually, I think, um, you know, in terms of moving forward, I think there's there's hopes that the two can work together as well. Um, and I think, you know, we've seen that in 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 patches in, in the last couple of games is sort of a bit of a partnership forming but yeah she certainly offers something a little bit different she's um yeah she's a bit more direct at times than, than perhaps Leanne she's obviously a bit more physical um Leanne's probably a bit more creative um so yeah I think they both they both offer something a little bit different and she she also has a bit bit more presence as well I think in the box you know given her size that's probably something that Liverpool haven't really had from from a forward um, I would say for for you know for a couple of seasons now, but yeah, she she provides that. So I think going forward, there's there's lots of different options. She can play anywhere, kind of in in the front three. But obviously, she is a natural out and out sort of you know number nine. Um, I know she has played as as a number ten before. So yeah, lots of options there, and I think it's just really good to have more competition um, for those forward places, and obviously take the pressure off Leanne a little bit with Rihanna Dean, who unfortunately has had a, you know a few setbacks in in her um, injury comeback. So hopefully when all three of them are fit um, and, you, you know, you're looking ahead to the future of, you know, potentially playing in, in, in the WSL, um, those three will be, you know, a, a really good um, kind of rotational options for, for Matt Beard to have. Yeah, I mean, Philippe, you saw her uh, at the weekend. I've seen her at, uh, when she made a debut at Blackburn on, on the Watford game. Um, she, she is very much, as soon as she gets it, her first thought is, I'm getting between the posts. You yeah, know, we, we a lot of our players like to be creative, like to, like to go wide, you know, and and the interplay is really good. But there, there is a, a bit more of a focus of as soon as as soon as you get the ball, I'm getting in, I'm getting between the posts, and that yeah, that's what I'm there for, you know. Which yeah, is good. we've not had that for a while, to be honest. No, absolutely not. You know, she seems very direct. Um, I was hugely impressed with her yesterday. I felt she she you know she really did run uh, Crystal Palace ragged. Um, they couldn't handle her. Um, and you know she's just a, a real presence for me in in the penalty area. Um, you know when you've got set pieces and you've got the likes of uh, Missy Bowkerns and Megan Campbell's throws coming in. You know she's she's somebody who I think the defences are going to be terrified of um, getting on the end of those. Um, you know she proved in the Watford game as well with the the late winner that she 
got there that, you know, she's in and around the right areas constantly. And, you know, if that, that ball falls to her in a position that, you know, she can get it in the back of the net, then she will do. Um, you know, the goal that she scored yesterday for me, um, I couldn't believe she actually got it in. It just seemed from such a narrow angle. I mean, I was up the other end of the pitch, so maybe it wasn't quite as tight as it looked at the time, but it's you just couldn't see. It's a bit Suarez, Suarez versus Sunderland in his first season. By line, yes, not, yes. not far from it, you're going, you're not going to shoot from there. You go, oh, shows what, shows what yeah. I know. And then. then it's in the back <laughs> of the net. Yeah. It was one of those that, you know, when, when it hits the back of the net, you, you're kind of thinking, did that actually go in then? Or... <laughs> so yeah, there's a little I, bit I, of a delay in us celebrating, but um, no, she she was excellent yesterday. And, and like I say, you know, to have that sort of an option now, um, you can see that she's, you know, she's got that pedigree, um, you know, that maybe we've missed for a few years now. Um, you know, Leanne Kernan's come in, she's been absolutely brilliant for us. Um, but you feel like Katie's kind of, I know, bringing another kind of, option in for us um that, that maybe we haven't got at the moment and i think that's crucial like like emma says you know once hopefully we get into the wsl you know it's going to be a really good uh, a good blend of, of attacking forwards i think that we're going to have there there's Excellent. there's a thing here where you know liverpool have scored four goals there and canaan's not scored one and that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not. A, it's a good thing for Leanne in that it, it means that there's there's a little bit little bit less pressure on her. But also, I you know we've talked a lot about the decisions the managers made this season and, and and the shape he's ended up with. I feel as though if you're going to play this way, you know this isn't to throw out everything that Liverpool have done so far because they've been on a brilliant run and they've played some really good stuff. But I prefer that shape where you've got two players who feel like they're going to be goal scorers for you. And then one player who's going to be a bit more of a, a general provider. I think you need to feel as though there's the, the there's the risk of two of them popping up between the posts. So you've got Leanne now and you've got Katie, and the two of them could both do that job. And I think that that really really helps. Now it's it's ironic I say this because yesterday Yana Daniels gets a brace, you know, mm. and she's she's there in the casting the role of provider in amongst all of this. But you sort of take me points. You can you can well imagine how, you know, ultimately Mel Lawley being able to to run a flank stretch the play, make the pitch enormous, works really well as long as there's then people arriving. And where it has occasionally been a little frustrating for Liverpool this season is where, where it's not quite gone completely according to the plan and it's gone according to the plan a lot. But where it's Liverpool have allowed themselves or had certain games where they've been able to be a little bit frustrated, even that Watford game itself is a game where Liverpool, you know, dominate the play and dominate the ball. So having a second goal score or someone else who you feel as though could over the course of a season, which obviously she won't get now, but someone who you feel as though could hit double figures, and that's not a massive, a massive ask, a massive push. I think it's great from a Liverpool point of view, and you know we haven't been able to see what what, what Rihanna Dean's up to uh, because she's she's had the she's had the injury as well. But if there's an area of the pitch, it's good to have some options in. Let's be clear, it's absolutely that one. You don't want to be having to do a make, do a mend. And, you know, hopefully all in, these footballers we're talking about here, the fire in Liverpool from now until the end of the season in, in this division, you know, not losing a game, uh, possibly even just winning every single game because they look so potent and no one's going to want to play a potent football team. Yeah, I mean, the good thing now for Rihanna Dean, well, she probably won't see it this way, but is there's no pressure for her to come back. As in, she'll come back when she's ready. There's no rushing about. There's no like when Rihanna Dean's back, she'll she'll save the day. It's now come back when you're ready and you're coming into a side that's confident, that's, that's winning, and then you've got options. So there's no it takes the pressure off her a little bit as well. So she could feel a bit more relaxed uh, when she's returning. So I mean we've touched on a few bits for, for people that don't know. So we've played four games in in January. Um, so as usual, Neil, one of my predictions is you know miles out as always. So Blackburn away. Blackburn's always a tough game. You know, you know nil 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 nil. So you know. I'll take I'll take a scrappy one nil and I'm up to half time. It kind of felt like that sort of game where we managed to get the lead, but it was an absolute dog of a game to get go get into. And it finishes six nil and you know, me be, me going up well, shows shows what I <laughs> shows what I know about football. But I mean Leanne Kernan, six minute hat trick, fastest hat trick in Liverpool women's history is uh, unreal. And the first goal, if you haven't seen it, people need to go on the FA player. It's yeah. ridiculous. Edge of the box, bends it to the Far top corner, and that shows when players are confident, they will try unbelievable things, and unbelievable things will generally come off for them. Very much so, and I think that this is, you know, th this whole performance here at Blackburn away, it felt to me like, you, you know, this is where 
if there's ever there's a game where you can talk about whether or not Matt Beard's earning his corn, it's the idea that the first game back after what's an extensive layoff, an extensive layoff, Liverpool don't just put a performance on, but they put a performance on to the point that they, they, win, they win 6-0. And, you know, this is, that that suggests everything's right within the group, tactically, physically, mentally. And I think mentally is almost the biggest the biggest one. You know, I think there was a, there's a real sense of, you can imagine Matt being able to say to them, drill into them in the days leading up. A lot of people are going to wonder if you're just going to drop points here, that you're just not going to be quite on it. Things aren't going to be quite right and you're going to prove them wrong and let's talk about them. Let's be clear how you're going to prove them wrong. For me, that's, you know, it it really does. It speaks of something that's very harmonious there, but also something that's that that's got an astonishing level of focus about it. You know, this is these are the two away wins. Don't get me wrong, but these are big, big, big victories from a Liverpool point of view, and they show the gulf really between Liverpool and their opponents. So you know, let's be clear about this. Don't get me wrong. This isn't a Blackburn side that you know prior to the game will have had any illusions that it's it's looking at getting promoted or anything like that. But it's a side who will have wanted to make it difficult for Liverpool and do make it difficult for Liverpool for a period of time until Liverpool break them and then they score and they don't stop, score to make it 2-0 and don't stop scoring. And that that is the it's the mark of something, I think. And it's it's the mark that a lot is right. You know, they've, they've not just been riding the crest of the wave in the previous games. They have the long break and then suddenly there you go. And Blackburn just could not live with them. They couldn't live with Leanne, don't get me wrong, but they couldn't live with Liverpool. And then from there, you know... It, things feel as though they're just so right at the moment for this side. And then the next sort of thing that happens in amongst all of that is obviously that the manager, they go and get the good results against Watford and the manager looks to really test them and have a look at where they're up to against Tottenham and all in these, the, you know, all of this speaks of not what, not even what we have, we hold. It's a real, let's see where we are because we're really beginning to plan for next season. Now the best version of planning for next season, which is we're thinking about promotion. We're not just thinking about, well, who will see who's all right for next season. It's how are we going to make next season work. And that to me is really exciting. It is. I mean, going on to the Watford game, you know, People will be forgiven thinking Watford second bottom of the league. Um, I've had some drummings this year thinking the way Liverpool are playing, you would think it Liverpool will win. Uh, but credits Watford, Watford were extremely organized and made it really difficult. And it was one of those days, Emma, where it was probably one of the few times you could say Leon Kinn had had a bit of an off day in front of goal, which look all players do. But the the big thing for Liverpool was they kept probing, they kept going. And then when you take Leon Kane off, your natural reaction is, well, that's the main goal for it gone off. And on comes the new striker, Stengel, and she just plays a different way. And it was just like, Liverpool found a way. And you always had that edge thinking, it's five minutes to go, we've still got two chances in, in us here. And I must admit, you know, that's the, that, the long throw, the header, you know, I, that's the best eruption I've seen of, because we haven't seen many goals cop end in front of the, the fans, most goals have been the other side of the pitch, which is really inconsiderate because it's the harder to see. It'd be nice to a bit more <laughs> to alter. So I must admit, the eruption when that went off was was a uh, un- was unreal. Yeah, I mean, like as as Neil said before, you know, just having that option to bring on another goal scorer um, is 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 big for Liverpool. So yeah, Leanne went off, but then they know that <laughs> on comes a new new striker who's who scored. You know scored the week before against Blackburn, she's full of confidence. She's, you know, she's already got her first goal. Everyone knows that as a striker coming to a new club, getting the first goal is always, you know, one of the hard, hardest sort of milestones to get over. So, you know, she she had everything really to go for against Watford. And then, you know, they've just played arguably their best, you know, best game of the season and yet they still lose. Um, and it's just to be able to have that option uh, yeah, that that Meg Campbell sort of provides from those throw-ins and just another weapon and another threat and something else that teams have to think about is just so so difficult for teams trying to find a way to to beat the Liverpool side because we've seen seen teams come out try and play Liverpool and you know they just can't do it and then you now see teams that as I say, you know, Watford wise, arguably most organized and most professional discipline performance that they've had all season. And yet they still lose because you've still got to face Missy Bocan's corners, you still got to face her free kicks, you still got to face the the throw ins from from Meg Campbell. And then you've got two two strikers who are full of confidence. You know, you've got Rachel Furness who can score from anywhere, um, with any part of her body and her head is basically like a golden boot. So it's just <laughs> There's just so many ways that you know that that Liverpool can can score these days, and I've I've 
genuinely like sat and watched a game of football and laughed a couple of times. And the Meg Campbell throw in was one. Um, and uh, the Van Dyke header was one. <laughs> so I think it sort of puts you into like context just how enjoyable it is now to watch, you know, to watch this side is that just just the goals come from nowhere. And, you know, like the 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 Leanne Curler against Blackburn was just one of those moments where I sat there and I, I was at that game and um, you know, with yourself, Chris, and watched it live and I just I just sort of burst out laughing. <laughs> yeah. Well the funniest thing of that goal is um the one time Olivia takes took her eye off the game and she looked at her and she went, What and she went, What did I miss? Of all the goals to miss. So she seen it since she went, that'd have been good to see live, wouldn't it? I was like, it, it, it would love you. It was really good. That, that's because she didn't bring her little mighty red mascot. That's why. Well, yeah, and you good were luck. making me get you were making me get hot chocolates for everyone. So that yeah. also didn't help, did it? <laughs> <laughs> but um sticking you, Emma, uh, obviously you went to uh Spurs away, which um Liverpool went out the Conti Cup uh one nil. Um I've seen the, the game back and, you know, there wasn't much between two sides really. And this is a Tottenham side who are pushing towards European spots. You know, this is not, a, you know, a lower, a, the lower end of the uh, WSL. This is, you know, a very, very good side, you know, well, well coached. Obviously it was nice for the fans who travel to go and see uh, Vicky Jepsen there as well. So they took a lot away from that. It, it tells a lot that Mac Beard, they see that as a disappointment because they feel that's a game they could have won and probably all of the would have won, which is again, it's nice to show Liverpool of viewing it that way. This is the game we should be winning. Uh, and we feel a bit yeah. disappointed rather than, well, it was nice to get to this far. It was nice to play a Tottenham. You know, it's it's that mindset change. You can see, see it going through the squad. Yeah, I, I thought Liverpool were actually the better team, uh, marginally, but but I did I did feel like they, they were the better team. Because I felt like the times when Liverpool were on top, their chances were better than the periods that Spurs were on top. You know, naturally, when when you're playing a game of, of of that level and of that quality, and the, the confidence that they've obviously had given their form in the WSL this season, it was natural that Liverpool were going to be put under pressure at times. Um, Spurs have got a lot of pace on the break as well, so um, again, that was natural. But I actually thought Liverpool dealt with it really well. Um, I think it was it was a blow the timing of their goal because actually Matt had just made changes, and perhaps that that was why was it was almost like Liverpool was so well organised and they were so confident and they were really enjoying that kind of period. And then um, the goal came in just as the players maybe were just trying to kind of mm. find that organisation and, and get up to speed with the game. And then and then from that point on, um, just as pleasing in terms of, as you say, the mentality of always being disappointed. For me, that the the actual response to going a goal down um, was was brilliant. Like Liverpool were then comfortably, in my eyes, the, the better team for the remainder of that game. It wasn't like, you know, Spurs looked like they were going to go on and get get another. And I think the celebrations actually from the Tottenham side showed just how hard that that game was. And um, yeah, it was it, it was really pleasing. And not only that, but the players that came in and the players that rotated, I thought, were fantastic. Carla Humphrey was was absolutely brilliant. Um, and I think she showed, you know, why. A lot of people have said this, but you know, she she was a player that kind of in mind for the future um, might be one that 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 perhaps will have a bit of a bigger role in the WSL. Just you know, that style of football perhaps suits her a little bit more to the championship, and I think she showed that in the cup game against Spurs. And, and obviously, Meg Campbell was was brilliant again at the back. So um, yeah, and and that was I know that you know Bo Kearns had a bit of a knock, Leanne had a bit of a knock, Lawsy had a knock, um, Jazz Matthews wasn't involved, Ker Kerry Holland wasn't involved, so. You think when you kind of have those players fully fit and you bring those players back in, um, yeah, there was a, a lot of encouragement from that from that Tottenham defeat for sure. Yeah, which is what you want to say. And then uh, obviously we're, we're filming this on uh, Monday night, so uh, yesterday, Philip, you were at uh, Crystal Palace uh, for storming four 0 win. I mean, this was first against third. You know, Palace had just uh, just beaten Durham. You know, so this is this wasn't uh, an easy game. This 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 is probably what probably the one of the most difficult aways we're going to have this year and 4-0 you know and from I've watched the game back um Liverpool were pretty much dominant the whole game and dealt with the physicality of the second half when you know they were comfortably in the lead yeah absolutely um you know as I was making my way to the game I was kind of thinking you know a draw wouldn't necessarily be a poor result here you know it keeps them away from us um you know and I probably you know, would have would have taken a draw, you know, if it had happened that way. But, 
you know, from the first minute, we just totally dominated them. Um, and you could just tell that Palace couldn't really live with us. Um, you know, we had corner after corner early on, um, long throw-ins again from Meg Campbell, and we just bombarded them. And, you know, you, you didn't feel that they were going to be able to keep us out. Um, and obviously they didn't. You know, Jana Daniels gets the first goal. Um, and then we, we just kick on from there as well. You know, there's no resting on our laurels and going, all right, we've got the goal now, let's settle in and just, you know, ease the game away. We, we thought, no, actually, we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing and we're just going to keep taking the game to you. Um, and it it was interesting because I was I was a bit concerned going to the game um, that Kerry Holland wasn't available because um, I think mm. she's been probably our, our standout midfielder this season. Um, you know, she's she's totally dominated that midfield for me. Um, and, uh, you know, I was a bit concerned, you know, that we maybe wouldn't have enough legs in there with having Fernie in there and um, Bill Kearns. But, you know, they were both excellent. Um, you couldn't fault any of the players that were out there yesterday. And um, I felt like Missy Bill Kearns actually came into her own yesterday. It felt like she was full of confidence maybe from, from the Spurs game as well. You know, although we we got knocked out there um you know there was a bit of a concern from me as well that maybe that would take a little bit of the wind out of our sails um you know kind of like losing that game when maybe we didn't deserve to um and the, the players told me that i was that I, I don't know much as well about football and i don't know as much about them as what i well, thought join, I did. join the club I'm, I'm the head of it so <laughs> i'm really good at, i'm really good at getting things wrong yeah, I mean, you know, you just looked at that side as well. You know, we didn't have a, a substitute goalkeeper even on the bench. And you're thinking, mm. God, you know, if Rachel Laws gets a bit of a knock here, you know, how are we going to handle that? And, you know, the, the players just decided, actually, you know, the best way to handle that is to make sure that nobody ever gets nearer. Um, <laughs> so that was that was basically our attitude throughout the whole game. And, you know, it could have been a lot more than 4-0 as well. Um, that was how dominant we were. Uh, we had loads of chances and... You know, to, to put on that kind of performance against a, a side that's up near the top of the league, I think, you know, it sends a, a real message to the other the other teams. You know, we mentioned before about the 6-0 against Blackburn. You know, I think I think beating a team that maybe some teams were hoping you'd maybe drop points against uh, 4-0, you know, really does kind of, you know, put a bit of a punch to the stomach of those sides as well. And, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they react to that. Yeah, I think you're right there. Oh, I think we've lost Philip with one sec. Uh, Neil, but one thing that January has shown is the um, the strength of the squad. Because, you know, we've both said Liam Robe has probably been our best centre-back this year. And we actually rested her for a game. And I've never known as ever to rest Liam Robe. You know, but you, th- you bring someone in um, like uh, Campbell. And we've all talked about a long, a long throw. It's a weapon. It's a brilliant weapon that she has. But it doesn't take away from the fact that she, she's an excellent centre back and she is dominant, which um, I sometimes feel with uh, Meg Campbell. We, we all talk about a long throw because it's such a good move, but then we we forget to, um, you know, mention the fact that she's an excellent, she's a really, really good defender. Yeah, we, we forget the footballer that's underneath there and and the fact that as you said before there's a there's a physicality to it you know she's there's there's a, she's another uh liverpool footballer who's i think she's she's five five seven five eight uh that means that she's able to be you know relatively imposing on there as well and she's got the she's got the experience that she has and, and that's you know that's worth worth cherishing too she's been around the block a little bit i think it, when you talk about this squad in general it, it's easy to view them as having i think sort of a lot of a lot of competition for places and to a time sort of worry whether or not that's good but what, what i think it's allowing the manager to be able to do is you know he can choose to decide that if a player is just not right a player is just not right you know if they're not quite fit enough then it's all absolutely fine we can you know we've got other options here who can who can fit in i think the other thing that helps with that as well is there's a level of versatility between these sorts of positions and roles too that liverpool can can look to look to move players around a tiny little bit and in terms of where we can expect to see them on the pitch and in general there is just a comfort and i I think that you know we've got to be careful here because listen this this season could go badly wrong um you know seasons do sometimes go badly wrong from positions such as this but it doesn't get much better than what liverpool have been doing in this division for this length of time now and i think that it can sound really base this it can sound like you know really really like the 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 most obvious thing to say but 
part of why Liverpool's players all look much more comfortable in different areas of the pitch than perhaps where you expect to see them at times is because they're all really good players and they're better than the vast majority of their opponents. They're not a bit better than the vast majority of their opponents. They're not in a better run of form. They've not sort of found a way to be able to step up a certain level because of a tactical thing, though that's been absolutely massive this season. Liverpool, every single time they step onto the pitch, they're 11 with maybe one or two exceptions game by game is markedly better, not just a little bit better, markedly better than the 11 that they're coming up against in this division. And that should be the case, you know, well, because of the, the opaque nature of women's football and questions around finances. We'll never truly know, but there's every chance that Liverpool's budget is two, three times the size of Crystal Palace's, as an example. So we should get to see that on the pitch. And What's been frustrating in the last couple of seasons is that at times we haven't been able to see that on the pitch for any one of a variety of reasons. But right now that's crystal clear. And so Meg Campbell's a really good example of it. You know, she ultimately, if Liverpool are playing three centre halves, Meg Campbell should be one of the best three centre halves on the pitch. that's the way this should work. And what that means again is, you know, and again it's a comment we sometimes make about the about the men's team, but it's valid here. The the toughest game that, for instance, you know, um, any of the forwards Mel Lawley gets at any given time should actually be the training game. The the, mm. the 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 players in this division that Mel Lawley should struggle the most to get past are the ones she she she, she plays on a Tuesday in a seven aside. That genuinely is is where Liverpool are, and I think that's a really important thing, and it's an important thing to hold on to. Now, obviously, that will change, you know, if things go as we hope next season, and also if if things don't go as we hope between now and the end of this season, then then we can be left looking really stupid in moments like this, but. What this means, though, is that when Meg Campbell comes in, if she comes in for Jazz Matthews, if she comes in for Leanne Robe, if she comes in for Neve Fahey, if she comes in for, for Michaela Moore in, in the centre-half position before we even have a chat about what happens if she comes on comes in at wing-back, you know, mm. straight away there, she's coming in, but she's surrounded by teammates who know what they're doing and who are also amongst the three best centre-halves on the pitch at any given moment. All of this makes playing football much more straightforward. And I think that this is, you know... A, I think that the great achievements of Matt this year, I mentioned before, around they have the long break around Christmas and then they come back. But what underpins all of this is he's took a team that's quite clearly, for a variety of reasons, been low on confidence. He's made some additions. He's got them playing a certain way. The formation change worked. He's ridden that that ride along. And now where we find ourselves is every single time these players go on the pitch, they're as confident as they should have been to start with. And it's not, you know, it's it's it, it, it's not a false confidence. They are as confident in themselves and in one another and in Liverpool Football Club in this division as they should always have been to start with. But that takes building up and that takes time. And now suddenly, as you said before, you're Blackburn difficult away. They go and score six. Palace, one of the three or four toughest games they've got left over the course of the season. The three 0 up at half time, and the three 0 up at half time, and the three 0s flatter in Palace. That's where they are now. And I think that that, as I say, that's a massive compliment to them. It's a massive compliment to the manager. But it's. It's right and proper, given that this is what Liverpool should have been doing, given the fact that they've got much greater resources than many of the sides they're facing. I can see Emma nodding along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more because when you mentioned before in terms of the, you know, the, perhaps the disparity in terms of the resources and, and what's available to a club like Liverpool, um, yes, there, there comes pressure with that. There becomes expectation. And that's that's one of the things which, you know, you speak to any any footballer that has played for Liverpool, it's, it's one of the things that they always talk about is, there, you know, the Liverpool game is always everyone else's hardest game. So you have to manage that. But as you said, it's almost like they've now realised that. They embrace, and, they, they embrace yeah, it more now. Yeah, they've, they've embraced it and, and they're OK with that. And they've gone, the reason why we're everyone's toughest game is because we are the best players in the league. So it's almost like they've now started to believe that. And, you know, they're going into these games and they're playing like they, they're the best players in the league. They're playing like they represent Liverpool Football Club. And they're playing as players who should be in the WSL because, you know, I spoke to, I, I won't say the name of the manager, but I spoke to a former manager or a former coach um, at the Man City game this weekend um, who was, you know, just there watching as a spectator. And, and you know, he, he, he asked about, about the Liverpool side and sort of how I thought we were, we were getting on. And I said, you know, we've been amazing. And, um, and, 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 and he actually said, well, you know, you look at, you look at the Liverpool squad and you compare them to, some squads at, at, at the bottom of the WSL, the likes of Leicester, who obviously just went up last season, Birmingham City, who who are down there as well. Um, and he was saying, I, I would take that Liverpool squad on paper over over their squad, and I and I agreed because I think the quality of our players, our WSL standards. So, yeah, the fact that they're, they're now playing like that um, is, 
and and not just doing it you know as a one-off they're playing like that consistently and they're playing at that level week in week out is something which i just think of the teams in the championship just can't really cope with agree agree i mean philip i've got you back um uh, i mean from my point of view um uh, my favorite game in january is the watford one because there's nothing better than scoring in the last 10 minutes in a game that feels like it's not one of those it's one of those days for you i wonder if the most pleasing one probably for the squad and maybe possibly to scare opposition fans is the win at crystal palace is there's no jazz matthews who's been immense no kerry holland which we all say is the key to our midfield and no mel lawley who let's be honest has been the best winger in the in the league and no one can handle her that's three big players that aren't coming and what happens is yaron daniel goes don't worry i'll step in and i'll score too you know, Kerry Holland, Rachel Finesse, best two players on the pitch in that game. And then you have Meg Campbell, Leanne Rowe, Fahey, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's key really, uh, you know, as I said, you know, before when I was going to the game and, you know, you start seeing the team uh, coming through and you're a bit like, oh, you know, we're missing some really key players here. You know, how are we going to handle this? How is it going to work? Is, you know, Katie Stengel going to play well with, Leanne Kernan up front, you know, is are they going to try and run into the same spaces? You know, there's all these unknowns and literally all my concerns were out of the window within five minutes. Um, and that wasn't because we'd scored a goal at that point or anything. It was just, you know, the sheer dominance that we were that we that we had. I think we must have had about 90% possession at that point. Um and, you know, they were under the cosh and you know, it was interesting actually. Uh, one of the, one of the other people that was there was saying that they did listen to um, one of the palaces podcasts, and they were saying that if we get a goal in the first half, that they, they can't see a way that Palace would get back into it. And I literally sat there for like the first 10, 15 minutes and thought, I don't see how Palace get anything out of this game. The only way that they could have done is if Liverpool had made a massive mistake somewhere and just couldn't take the chances and. You know, the, the kind of form that they're in, the chances that they're taking, you just couldn't see how that wasn't going to be the case. And, you know, it is a credit to all of them that they're all ready to to take their place on that pitch and to, to give their all for the team, you know, whenever they're called upon. And I think then that's also a great credit to Matt as well, um, you know, to have all those players ready and, and willing to fight for the shirt. You know, there's been times in the past where we've had players that haven't wanted to wanted to play for us and, you know, we've been asking for them to go onto the pitch and, and they've not wanted to. And, you know, it's a very, very different position that we're in now to what we were in 12 months ago. And, you know, it, it has to come down to the direction of the club, the commitment that the club's had um, in the women's side, I think, over the last 12 months as well, I think is coming to fruition. Um, and, you know, the fact that they've got Martin, who, who's been there, done it and, you know, won the T-shirt, so to speak. And, you know, the players are, are reacting to that and believing in what he's asking them to do. Um, and, you know, winning games always helps, doesn't it? Um, and, you know, the confidence that they're showing now is is something that I haven't seen from a, a Liverpool women's side probably since since they actually won the league. Um, and, you know, I think I think it's... it's, it's a, a... Oh, she was in full flow then as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, Philip makes the fair point. It's it's the confidence now. You know, this is probably the most enjoyable women's season I, I've been to. Probably, I mean, I've been going to the games now, back on and off now for about uh, five, six years. Um, this feels like the most enjoyable season and the most complete side we've had for a little while. Probably the next one before that was probably the side we had in the Scott Rogers, which was just tailing off from the side that won the league. Uh, but... The other thing you just like now in this side is the determination for things such as clean sheets. Um, trust me, when Liverpool win six one, Rachel Laws is absolutely <laughs> livid. I've no, you know, you, if it was six one, Rachel Laws is doing a nothing. I know, but that's kind of how they, they view it. Is we conceded five, and they hate the fact they conceded five, and that's kind of how they view it. Is this is our thing? We don't concede goals, and then we let everybody else do their thing. And I quite like that. You know, that that, that sort of inner belief but going into february so three games for us in february uh and if we're being now this can come back about me in the arse won't be the first time <laughs> realistically it's probably liverpool over lionesses they are probably they are the biggest threat to liverpool is 
Lundsley's line are, are having a really good season. They're a hard team to face. They're a very talented team. We saw that opening game of the season when they beat us 1-0. Um, but this is, on paper, this is the, the month where Liverpool can put scoreboard pressure on. They're the, the games that you would expect Liverpool to do well in. And for the Lionesses, they've got, I would argue, more challenging games. You know, They've got Arsenal in the Cup. So they're not like to rest people for Arsenal in the Cup because you don't want to be embarrassed by Arsenal. Then you have Durham and then they have Palace. And, you know, whereas ourselves, it is two bottom half sides, which will still be a challenge. We saw something in the way. Although we beat them three once, someone give you a game and they make it difficult because they're very well organised. Yeah, yeah, I think, that, I think, no, I think that's all fair. And I think that that's, I think, you know, who, the point about this is the, the size of the mountain that there is to climb. In that mm. you know, so far this season, the reason why the points gap is there is because, and, and don't get me wrong, ones and City Lionesses have done well. Um, they're the only other side going at better than two points a game. Uh, they have got the game in hand as well. But the point on these things is always just to sort of measure. You know, the, the, they Liverpool have got to take a step down, but they've also got to take a step up in terms of the level of consistency in order to get near to Liverpool now. That's what the gap means. And all the way through this this season, we've been talking about the number of games, the fact that there aren't as many games as you think the end of the season could come pretty quickly. You know, if Liverpool win the two games that you're talking about there, Chris, and there's one more slip from London City, then Liverpool can go to London City and a draws a perfectly fine result. Perfectly fine, because all of a sudden then, you know, Liverpool will be on played 16. You're only going to play 22. And this is, this is the... Is the key thing really with the way in which this 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 division's uh, operating is that all the way through what worried us the conversations we were having was Liverpool can't let there be too much of a gap at any point they've got to get themselves to the top and then when they get themselves to the top they're going to kick from kick for home well this is it this is what kicking for home looks like and you know if Liverpool can win these two games coming up against these bottom bottom half sides then London City have got to have got to perform as well as they have all season just to hang in with Liverpool. And then Liverpool go to their place, and and you know, it's, without being cocky about it at all, it isn't about that at this point. It's about taking the dominance that's clearly there, the dominance you can see in the table. To see, you can see the dominance in the goals scored. You can see the dominance in the goals conceded. You know, it's in in thirteen games, Liverpool have scored eleven more goals than London City. London City have only scored sixteen. You know, the, the, when you begin to do the maths of that, you know, London, the number of goals London City have scored plus forty percent again is how many Liverpool have scored. Again, flip that round the other way. You know, London City have, have only con- have conceded ten, and fair play to them. And it's, it's a massive reason why they are where they are in twelve games. That's a brilliant. That's a brilliant thing. In thirteen games, Liverpool have only conceded five, literally half the number of goals. When you begin to sort of go through the numbers of all of this, the extent to which when London City now need to find themselves for a level of performance, and then that Liverpool's level of performance has got to go down markedly. And that's before you get to some of the the softer, well, the harder stats, but the stats we have less access to across the division, where you know number of shots that I had game by game, number of shots on target that I have game by game. Liverpool are utterly dominant in all of these metrics and have been for some time. And, you know, the two side, the two games coming up against the sides in the bottom half of Liverpool should not be complacent. They should be desperate to work and desperate to do the business. But if they do that, I just think the gap, the gap as it is will be bigger. The gap will be bigger. It won't be smaller. It'll be bigger when they, by the time they get to go to London City and Liverpool will be in the fifth round of the FA Cup as well, given the, the tie that they've got. You know, there's so many reasons to be cheerful, but there's also so many reasons why this is an uphill battle for all the sides beneath them, but especially London City. It's a massive uphill battle. Yeah, I mean, Emma, as Neil says, you know, Liverpool have got to do, obviously, they've got to do, do their job. In some ways, the Watford result is probably the perfect result because that shows them... Yeah. You know, quite quite easily. Yeah, you know, we can dominate, but you know, it, you don't want it to become one of those games because the Watford game was a hard win. It was a hard, probably the hardest fought win we had. Which, you know, rightly people on paper wouldn't have put that one down as the hardest one, but it was. So I think when we're playing Coventry and we're playing Sunderland, that does at least give the expectation to the players, but also to the fan base that we've got to get in early and we've got to get behind this because it, it this is these aren't games that are going to be a procession. Yeah, and, and in the past, they, they perhaps have been those games that the complacencies come in or that the focus isn't quite there or that, you know, they haven't reacted very well to, to things not going, you know, to plan on paper. Whereas that Watford game showed that actually, you know, this is a side that, that know that it's not going to be easy. They know that the championship has, you know, it just gets better and better each year. They know that these sides that are, that are coming to play Liverpool, that is their cup final. London City Lionesses, when they, <coughs> they when they play that game, um, 
what is it, 9th of March, I think it is, maybe early March, yeah. when they play that game, um, they have to win. Like, there's literally no other option. They absolutely have to win. If they don't win that game, then they're not they're not getting promoted. It's as simple as that. And and they will know that and they have to carry that pressure. Whereas Liverpool, not that they should play for a draw, but Liverpool know that, you know, they, they can always get away with a draw. Um, you know, they just can't really afford, you know, London City Lionesses to win. But I don't I think I think that's that's the difference, is that that mentality isn't there. Liverpool will go into that wanting to win it because they want, you know, they want to put down a marker that they are quite comfortably the the best team in the league and just to kind of stifle any other suggestions that that there could be any any sort of battle race on. Um yeah, if they if they pick if they get their job done in the next few weeks. Oh I was catching this. <laughs> so, so oh oh she's back. Right. Cool. So uh, what we'll talk about is um so this weekend we've got Lincoln, haven't we, in the cup. So hopefully, you know, if you're in the area, this, this is the game to come and see because there's no men's football this week weekend either. So let's try and get the crowd up even more and get more chance to see a very, very good Liverpool side. And hopefully we may get to see the likes of um young uh, Silcock again at centre back and young Lucy Parry at right wing back, who have been brilliant for us in the Conti Cup. I mean, Silic to me just looks just looks like Joel Matip. Uh, she's dominant in the air. She's so relaxed on the ball and just looks like a real talent. So quite look forward to seeing, hopefully seeing her get some minutes again. Uh, are, you, are you thinking the same, Philippa? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what, what sort of side we can put out, to be honest. Um, you know, we know we've got a few knocks there. There was players yesterday who picked up a couple of uh, injuries. Um I'm not too sure how he'll go about this. You know, Lucy Parry and uh, Silcott weren't on the bench yesterday. I don't know if that's because it was an away game and they'd already travelled with their squad and then people mm. picked up something. Possibly, yeah. It's, that... it's hard to know in this situation at the moment with COVID as well. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I've got a feeling that he'll go half and half. He'll go fairly strong. He'll try and give some players some minutes you know, Carla Humphrey, I expect, will start the game. Um, and, you know, obviously we want to get through in the FA Cup. Um, the goalkeeper is another question mark because, you know, we know that Rachel Laws has been, you know, carrying a couple of niggles this season, but then there wasn't a substitute goalkeeper on the bench yesterday. So, you know, it, it's a question mark for me whether or not we can actually make a change there. Um so, yeah, it's going to be very interesting um, to see what he does um, at the weekend, you know, whether or not he decides that there's certain players that, you know, need to have a little bit of a break, recharge their mm. batteries, maybe carrying a couple of knocks. Um, but, yeah, I think all eyes are going to be are going to be on the league, to be honest. Um, and like I say, I think I, I think it'll be more picking players to, to give them some minutes in case they get called upon in, in that running as well. So, um yeah, let's wait and see, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the only sl slight concern we've got at the moment is um, we have is the goalkeeper situation is, you know, unfortunately, Riley Foster, we're not going to see him until at least next season. And at the moment, Rich Laws appears to be the only fit goalkeeper. Uh, I don't know what the current situation was with, with the youngster we've got on, we got from uh, Derby, wasn't it? Um, hopefully, hopefully, she did have a knock. She did have a knock going into the Spurs game, um, so she might she might not have recovered from that fully. That might have been why she wasn't on the bench. But I know that yeah, she she did have a knock going into that game. Okay, well, fingers crossed. Hopefully, she'll be uh, okay for the weekend. So uh, partly because it'd, be, it'd be quite good to see her. We haven't seen a, we haven't seen a, any minutes from it yet because uh, the opportunity's not been there. So this would be a, a good opportunity for us to see her. Good experience for her as well. So, but listen, uh, I'll I'll I've kept you guys far too long anyway. So I'm. Um, and it's Monday night, you probably all want your tea, to be fair, as well. So, <laughs> uh, so listen, thank you, Neil. Thank you, Emma. And thank you, Philippa, again, for joining us on the show. Uh, we will be doing another show uh, end of Feb, where we'll see where the, the, lay of the, the, the lay of the land is. Hard to say that uh, this, this late at night. But until then, uh, thanks very much for joining us. And listen, like, subscribe, and, and uh, help, help us out wherever you can. And also... Okay. 
please look in the link, the link to our charity, which is uh, Felicon, who we are supporting now for the next six months. Uh, all the details are below. Uh, if you can give, that'd be great. If not, just please like and share. That That is all we ask for. Until then, we'll see you guys in four weeks' time. Thank <music> you.